Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. You're home for the most popular, least watched automotive enthusiast channel on YouTube. Today, we're going to be tackling a problem in our old Class A RV where the body appears to be delaminating from the frame. How in the world can that be? Welcome back to the garage. We've got a little bit of a different topic uh, for today. We're going to be talking about Class A motorhomes and the propensity for, you know, water intrusion to be an issue. So, now, um, this has to do with delamination, or in this case, suspected de delamination of your sidewall from the body of your RV. Now, in the case of this RV, the delamination is not an issue. She's solid. However, I did suspect that there was some delamination based on what I was seeing in this region right here. This wall is composed of fiberglass exterior with a Luon plywood underneath and then a tubular aluminum uh, stud work in the wall. It's about two inches thick, insulation, and then on the inside, whatever material is on the inside of the RV. Now, what I was dealing with was the separation of this hinge. This is a hinge for the basement doors the separation of this hinge from this sidewall. And I was like, what is in the world is going on here? How in the world do I fix this? Uh, this one I've already repaired, solid as a rock. This one I've already repaired. This is where the uh, electrical system is. You're gonna have to pardon my mess. I've got uh, all kinds of screws and rust and all kinds of things scattered around here. I'm gonna show you how I repaired this. Some of the things that I've been using, and I'll just cut to the chase, it took me a lot of time to figure this out. 1 8 inch thick aluminum, 2 inches at width, okay? You can get this at Lowe's. 3 inch self-drilling roofing screws. And they look like that. All right? A suitably sized, quite long drill bit that can drill through steel and aluminum. And when I say suitably sized, I mean it's just small enough for this tip of the screw to slip in, but also for the threads of the screw to really grab tight. Next tool, screwdriver. Next tool, a square bit, which is what I needed for mine, maybe not for yours, because uh, you have to remove these, these annoying little screws right here. You will need a handy nut driver on a, uh, I prefer a long extension on my drill, and uh, in this case we're looking at uh, 5 sixteenths to, uh, to drive these uh, screws. You will need a hammer. And I think that's about it. Now, what are you going to do? So this fiberglass here comes all the way down to this level right here. Behind this fiberglass is some Luon plywood. Now water comes up from here and also drips down through there, and that water drips down eventually, and it seeps in through these screws. You see how these screws are rusted. That water goes in there, and it deteriorates the plywood underneath. See that plywood coming off? But this plywood is only rotten up to about, about right there. Everything else from there up is okay. This uh, rot problem is not from water intrusion from above. It's from water intrusion being splashed up from below. So basically, since this is rotten and these screws are very short, this hinge really is not being held on by much of anything. So what we're going to do is put some longer screws in so that they go all the way back and screw into some solid metal. So how do we do that? Right here is a aluminum C-channel right here. And on the back side of that is the steel frame of the motorhome. So this C-channel is open here. So basically it looks, it looks like that, right? If you can remove the rotten Luon, if you can remove the rotten Luon and replace it with a solid piece of aluminum, drill a hole through it and then this screw will go through this, this aluminum. It will be sandwiched between 
the bottom part of this metal hinge, the fiberglass, this piece of extra aluminum, which is going in the place of, or in lieu of the rotted uh, plywood, and this piece of aluminum will be butted up against the two edges of the C-channel, like that. It basically boxes in that C-channel. Now you're going to take a screw and go th all the way through this and all the way through the back, you, I, I guess you could say the back side of my hand, right? Which is where the steel subframe of the RV is. So we're going to sandwich all of that stuff together and make something that's extremely rigid. Extremely rigid. Uh, this is a basket case. This is all rattly and nasty and ugly. This side over here, I don't even, it was, it was horrible. This was literally pulled away from the body of the RV by that much. It was terrible. I thought it was going to fall off the RV. But now, solid as a rock. So I guess my point is, if you think you have a delamination issue, you may not. It may just need a little redesign, a little improvement, because this is clearly an idiotic manufacturing. I'm going to call it a defect. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do one of these real quick, and I'll show you precisely the techniques that I'm using. All right, let's go ahead and get this uh, screw out. And of course it's rusted, it's not grabbing onto anything at all, so we're gonna get a screwdriver behind it. These screws are literally doing nothing. Uh, this channel is being held on by the stuff down there and stuff way down there on the other end of the RV. All right, we've gotta clean out the rotted Luon between the fiberglass and the aluminum seat channel. You can see right there, it's rotted. So I can go up, that's the top of the C-channel. Again, the C-channel is like that, right? And behind the C-channel is a piece of steel. All right, that's good enough. All right, one eighth inch thick aluminum about two inches wide, basically wide enough to span the outer edge of the C-channel in that fashion. So we're gonna center it on the hole. And you wanna you want go up just far enough to where the bottom of the aluminum is flush with the bottom of the, uh, you know, with the bottom of the surface here, otherwise, whatever you're doing, the door, the door won't shut properly. Now, what we're, the one we're doing it on now is just the wheel cover for the outside of the double wheels on the back. But the principle is the same for all of the compartment covers. All right, so now we're gonna drill. We're gonna drill through, we're gonna expand this hole. We're gonna drill through the fiberglass. We're gonna drill through this piece of aluminum. We're gonna go through the back side of the aluminum channel and finally through the through into the steel uh, frame of the uh, RV. All right, right here, you want to make sure and go perfectly straight back. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time trying to, you know, find where the hole is for your screw later on. All right, now I'm through the back side of the aluminum C channel. Now I'm going to drill into the steel. Uh, frame of the RV. Man, my bit's uh, kind of dull because I've done this a bunch of times already. All right, need a new screw. And I'm going to change out my bit holder here. To get a nut driver in. There you go, done. We have just We have just improved the solidity of this motor home by at least 92.876%. All right, well there you go. I'm going to go I'm going to take this all the way down this 39 foot long motor home uh, both on both sides, no doubt. 
uh, because it basically needs this treatment all the way down. Uh, again, I think it was simply a, a, mm, kind of a lack of foresight from the uh, manufacturer. But then again, this motorhome is built a lot better than a, a lot of modern ones. Of course, that's just my opinion. The old girl is uh, sitting on a Freightliner XC chassis and she's built like a tank, except for a few minor details here and there. This is gonna make the rigidity of the body in this area uh, really, really nice. I think this is gonna really work out in the long run, so. All right, that's all for now. Just a quick video on how to improve things a little bit on the body of your old Class A motorhome. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video where we uh, do something a little bit handy on an old Class A RV, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys know where it is. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy driving and taking care of your old vintage motorhome.